Hey folks, Crazy Climber 80 here again. And this time we're going to look at game number 14 in our uh, 20 from the Atari 2600 VCS series. And this game was created by a company called Imagic. And uh, Imagic had some kind of cool games for the Atari 2600 uh, back in the day. And this one is called Demon Attack. And it's very basic and maybe a little bit repetitive in terms of action. But I really liked this one. I I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, this was also created by Rob Fulop for Imagic. And uh, Imagic was run by a number of ex-Atari employees. Well, this was a great game. I really, really enjoyed it. I did not have this for the Atari 2600, but I had it for uh, the copy system, the Coleco Gemini. I played it like crazy. I loved it. Um... Atari sued Imagic over the release of this game because they felt it was too similar to Phoenix, which Atari owned the uh, home license to. And yeah, there's some similarities, but this is a great game. They they settled out of court, and this was still allowed to be released. Um, initially, uh, the game would end after Wave 64, and then Rob Fulop later made it endless. But uh, in this game, you are a, a cannon at the bottom of the screen firing up at these demons, these flying demons. Only the bottom demon will fire at you. That's important to know. So you can not worry about attacks from the other two enemies. There's only three on the screen at the time. Later on in the game, when you shoot an enemy, it will split into two, and then those smaller enemies will will dive at you, or they can shoot at you. But again, only one enemy can shoot at you at a time, and we'll go ahead and get started. Now, the scoring system will be... Uh, it'll always be... The smaller enemies that break off from the big enemies will be double what the big enemy is. And uh, to start the game off, uh, the big enemies are 10 points. And they can be up to like, I think, 15. And then after that, then they will break into smaller enemies. And it'll be like 20 for the big, 40 for the small. And then uh, it'll go up to like 30 for the big and then 60 for the small, I think. And then after that, the, the value will reset to 30 and 60. And the, the uh, lineup for the, for the enemies will start back at the beginning. Now, the 1-up system, I'm really not sure how that works. And as far as I can tell, for the first oops, for the first three stages, you will get an extra life when you complete them if you did not die on that stage. After that, it's probably like every fourth stage or something maybe, that you will get an extra life if you complete that stage without dying. I'm not totally sure, but... <laughs> yeah, when you shoot, from this point on, when you shoot an enemy, it will break into two smaller enemies, and they can, uh, they can dive at you. Uh, one of them will still shoot. When you get down to the final three enemies of the wave, and you destroyed the bottom one, then the top two will just fly around for a while. Try to get, try to nail those uh, those small ones, because, like I said, they are double the point value of the big ones. I think you can have a maximum of six extra ships on screen at, at a time. Uh, I've... I've never been great at this game, 
but this game, I believe, was my best I've ever played. Yeah, try to take out those small ones. I, I like the little blue sound they make when they descend. Notice that the firepower changes from enemy to enemy. At one point, they are able to have guided shots that will move when they move. If you let an enemy get past you, or the little, the little bird demons, the, the small ones, it can, it can just go to the bottom of the screen and disappear and not come back. But don't let it pin you in a corner, or it'll collide with you and kill you. Same thing for enemies that shoot, especially when they have uh, shaky shots or uh, shots that are guided. Don't let them pin you in the corner with their shots. And you'll need to uh, learn to strafe in this game. Uh, or uh, or you'll need to uh, slide under an enemy just before it's about to shoot and fire straight up. You can have rapid fire shots in this game. You can hold down, hold down the fire button. You can only shoot one at a time, but you can hold down the button and once uh, your first shot disappears off the screen, then your next one will fire. And it's sometimes good to use. But uh, later on, when you need to uh, time your shot just right to hit the enemy as you slide under its shot, you might not want to do the rapid fire. And now they've got those shaky shots, ah, I got pinned in the corner, that move when the enemies do. And these are starting to get really, uh, really dangerous <laughs> crap. Uh, shoot. You can play, uh, you can play game options that give you two-player, uh, play. It's not simultaneous. You, uh, alternate turns. Once, uh, once one player beats a level, then it goes to the other player, or beats a stage. And, uh, when a player runs all out of lives, then it goes to the other player. You can uh, set the difficulty switch to A or B, and I think one uh, switch A will make the enemies uh, have faster shots, or they move faster, I can't remember for sure, or maybe they shoot more. Yeah, the further you can get in this game, the more points you can score. Uh, up to up to the point that they decided they decide to uh, recycle the enemies. Uh, when they go back to the first enemy, it will be able to split up into two. Unlike uh, unlike the first time around. These guys I hate. These will be the last of the guys before they uh, go back to the first. Note that they get hard to shoot because they they shrink and then expand back to normal. And here is really where you you don't want to fall in love with the rapid fire. Now it's kind of nice to have uh, to have small uh, smaller demons, you know, that split up. Uh, if you have <clears throat> if you have a uh, small demon that's shooting, if it's got a bunch of bunch of other uh, small demons around, then it might just decide to dive at you instead of uh, fire at you. I'd rather have a much rather have a, a demon try to try to descend at me than shoot at me, especially later in the game. When, uh, when those shots are really tough to avoid. I, I love that pew-pew sound <laughs> that the little demons make when they dive at you. But yeah, uh, oh crap. If you, uh, if you have just, like, two demons left, and you've already destroyed the bottom one that was firing, then the two remaining demons will just flap around 
And you could probably just take a break there. Go grab a sandwich or something and then come back and you're still alive. Yeah, this this might have been a Magic's most popular game. Uh, Atlantis got a lot of notice. I didn't really play that one. I think it's kind of like Missile Command or something. I can't remember for sure. But uh, Dragonfire was fairly popular. Kind of frustrating, but kind of fun. Uh, Cosmic Arc, I really like. God damn it! <laughs> I had... I don't think I'd ever... Maybe I had broken 10,000 before this game, like back in the day. But uh, this was my best score. See, now it goes back to the beginning enemies, but these guys now split, and uh, their shots are, are shaky. And uh, the point value of these beginning enemies is reset to uh, 30 for the big and 60 for the small. But any chance you get, try to nail those uh, small demons. Because, like I said, they're worth double what the big ones are. Just note that they kind of bob back and forth as they descend. You can shoot them in one place or the other. And you'll be able to hit them. And there I got extra life for completing that stage without dying. But yeah, that's the key to getting an extra life. If you're on a wave or stage or whatever that will allow you to. Don't die on that <laughs> wave. <laughs> yeah, Rob Fulop made a made a number of games for Atari uh, before I think before uh, going to uh, Imagic, or maybe he did some uh, for Atari after, or maybe during his time with Imagic. Imagic, uh, I think might have folded by like 1984, but they did have some cool games. Like I said, this one, a lot of people liked Atlantis, uh, Dragonfire was kind of interesting. Oh, right. That's my game, but that's the best I've ever done on Demon Attack. There were a lot of ports of uh, Demon Attack, or uh, a lot of releases for other consoles, in television, uh, I think Odyssey 2 even had one. A uh, number of other systems. But yeah, this was a this was a popular game. Very, very popular. Certainly one of Magic's best. They didn't have a whole ton of titles, but this was definitely one of their best ones. But that is Demon Attack, and we're going to go ahead and look at some of the game variations of uh, Demon Attack. And there are a total of ten the even number w numbered ones are for two player alternating play and we'll look at a little bit of game number two but yeah whenever one player beats a stage or runs out of lives then uh, action goes to the other player and uh, I had not played uh, two player of any game in Stella, the uh, Atari emulator, that I could remember, so I had to figure out the controls on my own. And I think it was like G and J move you left and right and F fighters. I finally, finally got it. But yeah, once one player beats a stage or uh, runs out of lives, action goes to the other player. Since you know that the even number uh, game variations are for two player, we'll just look at the uh, odd numbered uh, ones. Well, it, once, uh, once you finish a two player game, then you'll see the uh, scores for each player alternate at the top. 
Now we're going to go ahead and have a look at game variation number three. And now you can guide your shots. This is kind of a double-edged sword, though. Um, wanting to uh, wanting to uh, uh, avoid an enemy's shot that's like directly above you or that has tricky firepower, and you need to to like slide under it real quick and fire shot straight up. That's not going to work very well when you have uh, guided shots like that. So I'm not really a big fan of the guided shots option. But uh, now we'll go ahead and have a look at game variation number five. And note how fast your shots are. That's just that's just how. It, later in the game, your shots get faster. So this actually just puts you after the first playthrough of all the different enemies. When it goes back to the first enemy, and the first enemy will split into two now, unlike the first time through. And here is where the the uh, point value was reset to uh, 30 for the big and 60 for the small. Yeah, the maximum amount of points uh, was, I think, uh, uh, what was it? 35 for the big and 70 for the small. That might increase to uh, more uh, during the uh, second playthrough. I'm not entirely sure. I was never able to get that far. Or I, I didn't pay attention on my last game. But yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely... If, if you are interested in playing games in Magic's history, this is going to be the best one, I think. And now, in this variation, you have... You have guided shots... And uh, they're, they're fast, and you start you know, later on in the game. Yeah, I, I do not like the guided shots uh, idea. And as I said, you can uh, use the uh, difficulty switches. And I think A will make the enemies more uh, faster, or have faster shots, or shoot more often, than with the uh, B switch setting. And now here is uh, setting 9. And now this, I hate! This actually, during gameplay, switches players on you. And that's stupid. I. Why did they go with this? It's terrible. But yeah, right during the middle of one player's gameplay, it switches to the other player. I think uh, setting 9 starts with player number 1, and then setting 10 starts with player number 2 or something. I'm not sure. But that was Demon Attack by Magic and Rob Fulop in 1982 for the Atari 2600. This was game number 14 in our series. And I hope to see you soon with game number 13. Y'all take it easy, everybody, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.